and for Don Bosco, that notion of helping young people understand the richness and the variety and the greatness of the faith that we share in church was so, so important. For him, it was about reason, religion and kindness. He wanted to ensure that his young people in that original oratory at Valdocco in Chirin could appreciate and value their experience of church. He worked hard to help them through music, through readings, through drama, to explore the richness of scripture and the richness of liturgy. As a priest, Father Stee is going to be working in the broadest possible church possible. And that, of course, is in our schools. He may well on a Sunday say Mass in a parish, but he is trying in his position as a Salesian teacher to bring the Church of God into the hearts and to the lives of so many young people. This is one of our dogs in our parish here at St. James's and the story about dogs and Salesians. Don Bosco had a dog and the dog was Grigio. Grigio was a protector of Don Bosco and this beautiful dog here is part of the parish community and also helps as well. It's a guide dog. She no, looks so, after me now. That's good. That's good. When I'm out there, go completely blind and she yeah. gives you marvellous. Yeah, she is. No, she's fantastic. She's fantastic. A beautiful. So we're in the sacristy of St. James's Church and this is where I was an altar server. So I would serve the altar here, I would come to Mass here and we would have little church. So in this room as well, all the children of the parish would come and have their catechism classes. So we're in the Archdiocese of Liverpool. So we see the Holy Father there and the Archbishop Malcolm. James's is my spiritual home. Um, I was baptised here 28 years ago. I made my first Holy Communion here 21 years ago. I was confirmed here 15 years ago. And then in July 2023, I will be ordained a priest here. So the community here is a fantastic community of prayer, fantastic community of love. And we see St. John Bosco. So it's a fantastic community of our Salesian presence. And I think brutal being the community of young people and a poor area, it's really good that we as Salesians were here. And it was really good for me that the Salesians were here. I was baptized by a Salesian, Father Pat McCambridge, using this font, this very font, Father Pat McCambridge baptized me here. So one Salesian, Father McCambridge, it was a fantastic Salesian that lived here for so long and he was the parish priest. So many people love and remember him. But this is my home. This is where I prayed. This is where I got close to God. But also this is where I realized how to be a good youth worker because we started a youth club here called Youth Active, which again was fantastic. And that happened first of all in the church. Like Don Bosco said, a church should be a place for love for joy and for happiness. We would run around this church as young kids because we didn't have anywhere else to play. Then we started using the primary school, then more and more kids started coming to the parish. So this is, for me, a perfect place to say, this is where the Salesians are, this is where the Salesians should be, and this is where we got a vocation, thankfully, after 60 years. Rita Shannon, a Salesian cooperator, catechist, friend. Now, over the years, you have known Steve, probably since he was kind of a, a small guy. What were your impressions of him when you worked with him back in the day? Well, he always put in quite a lot of work. Um, he was sincere. He had lots of time for the children. Um, and we did quite a lot of work together with the um, communion programme. When Father Jerry couldn't be here on the Wednesday afternoon for the special mass for the children that couldn't come to church every weekend, Steve and I would take turns of doing a Eucharistic service for the children and the you know 
probably the mums more than anything. Excellent. And in that work with the children, especially in preparing children for First Holy Communion, could you see then that possibly he was a, a person who might make a good priest? Yes, he was just so sincere and, you know, you just watch him sometime from the back and he'd be kneeling there just praying. Um, there's just something about him. Mm -hmm. My husband, Tommy, he always said to me, Stay will become a Salesian priest. And I put this to Stay a few times and Stay said, there's no way. <laughs> and, um, so and Tommy's he, looking up? Tommy's from looking him. from heaven yeah. over him, over Stay, because yeah. he had a lot of time for Stay. Yeah. He knew how dedicated he was. Excellent. Um, and when Stee called me one day and said to me, I've got something to tell you, I'm joining the Salesians. And my reaction was, I wish you'd have put £100 on a bet with Bethred, because Tommy would have won his bet. So here we are in the beautiful grounds of St James's Parish in Bootle, the home parish of Stee. Michael, you are a legend in this area, without a doubt. Because you've been here since the very foundation of the Salesian work. What was it like back in those days? Well, the Salesians came here and opened a grammar school in 1964. And I came in 1965 because there was supposed to be a scientific uh, slant on this grammar school. And I came with a priest who was retiring from teaching A-level, Father Della Hunty. And we uh, came that year and we started. The school had begun in the old St. Martin's College on Stanley Road, Bootle. And then at Easter 1966, we moved up to the site in Netherton Way. And uh, we were there and we are there still. The name of the school has changed a few times and the nature of the school uh, has become, of course, in 1972, comprehensive. And in 1972, there were 13 priests teaching in the school. Uh, how, day, how times change. So that was the beginning of the Salesian work in Bootle. And I think the reason we chose Bootle was that uh, th we already had a dozen or so vocations to the Salesian priesthood from the Greater Merseyside area. And so the, the thought was that there would be more vocations coming from this area? I guess that's the reason, one of the reasons. But it's a good reason, it's a good area for the Salesians to be in, I think. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Now, obviously, that is the school that Steve went to for his secondary education. Yeah. And in a sense, your dream came true. Yes, it did. Well, it, it, it was the dream of the Salesian superiors came true, <laughs> I think. Uh, but. So, of course, I was finished in the school by the time Stee joined, but I did teach perhaps three of his uncles, and certainly I had been to see his grandparents uh, at their home uh, in Bootle. And uh, one of my jobs was to interview the children who were coming to Salesian uh, College, as it then was, and Salesian High School, as it became, to, uh, to have a chat with the head teacher and to meet the pupils. And uh, I do, I do, of course, by the time that Stee had come, uh, we were now living in St. James's Parish. We'd moved off the site and um, we used to invite in some uh, possible young men into the community. Uh, and uh, Stee and others uh, came in and that's how we got to know Stee really well uh, and I remember uh, on Saturday night after another running him home to Pearson Drive yeah and would you say that notion of hospitality that notion of welcoming young people into Salesian homes Salesian houses Salesian communities was that pretty important in your way of helping Stee to discern his vocation well I would think so but I think all religious, you know, the monks in, in the Alps and whatnot, they've all got the vocation of hospitality. And uh, I think that uh, that's why we, we did it. And uh, they're not, he, it wasn't only young men we had, but we had parishioners from time to time. And certainly parish helpers we had visiting us 
you know, uh, for a meal from time to time. Not perhaps as regular as when Steve was here, uh, but uh, it still goes on. So you've seen Steve through the primary school as a young altar server. You've seen Stee through secondary school. You've seen Stee as a head altar boy here in the church at St. James's. You've seen him as a lector reading the word of God. You've seen him as a Eucharistic minister. You've seen him as a youth leader in our Youth Active program. And now in a couple of months time, you're going to see him ordained in this church. How does that make you feel, Michael? It's wonderful, wonderful. As I say, if this, what the Salesian superiors had in mind in coming to Bootle was to get a Salesian vocation, well then, it's worked at last after all these years. But there have been other boys who have become priests in the diocese and elsewhere. But uh, we haven't had a Salesian yet, but at least when we got one, we got a very good one. <laughs> Father Michael Duggan, thank you. Yeah. Oh, hi, my name's Monica uh, from St. James's Church in Bootle. Um, I've been here for over 40 years and this is where I met Steve. Oh, Steve used to come here um, as a boy when he was about 15 for the evening meal with all the priests at St. James's. Um, that's how I met Steve. Um, he used to come in and he used to sit with me for about half an hour before he went in for the meal and we used to have a real good chat. Um, he's such such a lovely boy. His parents must be so proud, and everybody at St James's is so so proud of him. Anne, Marie, two very loyal members of the St James's family here in Bootle. Thank you for talking to us today here at the altar of the Sacred Heart, which means so much to us. It's central to Don Bosco's devotion. Now. You have known Steve because you've been members of his family <laughs> of old, exactly, exactly. So what memories do you have of him as a youngster here in this parish? Yeah, when he was about seven, I think that's probably my fair, earliest recollection of Steve, and he was an altar boy. And we had a group of altar boys, all virtually the same age. But Steve always stood out as the quiet, shy, but very confident young man that he is. Um, watching him today, and he, he preached today at our service. It's absolutely beautiful. It was amazing, and it, every time I've heard him preach as a young adult, I get really emotional <laughs> because it's lovely to see somebody come through from a child right through, stay with our church, come every week on his own, serve the community, always had, always has had time for the older people, like Marie and I. <laughs> so um, it's just lovely. It's such a blessing to our parish. Yeah. And I think that's important as well to realise that Steve has come through the parish, he's through, walked through yeah. this parish, his, his steps have been in and around St James's Bootle. So come the 15th of July, how do you think you're going to be feeling? Oh, I'm bringing a load of handkerchiefs well, with me. <laughs> to, be, to be honest, even today's speech made me laugh and then it made me cry, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you still think of him as a little boy. Yeah. And then he's growing up now. So Steve is very much part oh, of this community. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's our Steve. <laughs> he's our Steve. Yeah. yeah. But don't forget, because he's our Steve, then... Yeah. You have become, been part of that journey with him. Yeah. And that's something that you need to be thankful. He's taken the love that he's found here out to the world. And what more can you ask? So the love of Jesus that he found in this parish, he's taking out to the world. What better testimony can we have for Steve? And what advice would you give to Steve now on the kind of the threshold of his ordination to the priesthood? What do you think young people are looking for in a Salesian priest? They're looking for people that, you know, are down to earth, I think, that they can relate to, you and know, honest. that understand, that are honest, yeah. you know, and that are, are caring, you know, that you, you deeply love the child mm -hmm. and you want the best for them and you're trying your best to, you know, to develop them in their own way. Brilliant. Would you say the same, Victoria? Yeah, yeah. The, the, he's a, the, obviously he is anyway but that he carries on the way he is and still moves with the times mm -hmm. 
to get set in in your own right. old, old ways but he's got that nature where he can see what's happening around and he's still obviously involved in schools and youth groups and stuff and as long as you're keeping up with everybody right yeah, keep the fun and laughter. Yeah. <laughs> very <laughs> important, very yeah. important to have humour. Yeah. And from a practical point of view, you two, along with so many others in the parish, are going to be getting ready for this ordination. Yeah. So at this stage of the game, what do you think 15th of July is going to look like? Oh, we can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind your division. Yeah. You know, we've got these yeah, ordinations. We have. It's going to be, it's going to be fabulous. It's yeah. going to be a weekend long affair. It's yeah. Brilliant. It's going to be such a celebration. You've alluded to this already, but the, the feeling of pride in the parish. Do you think yeah. that's something? Oh, yeah. yeah. Even young ones that don't know them, but they know about them, right through to um, the older generation mm -hmm. who've seen them grow and from just popping into church to being an altar server to being the head altar server and then oh. leaving us and going off to do mm -hmm. the things that he's done the pride of everybody right the way through so excited. Yeah, so excited the things as a Salesian cooperator that you have a great devotion to our lady oh, blessedly. help of Christians and so perhaps you might want to ask our blessed mother to be with Steve, especially in these months leading up to his ordination and especially during his priestly life. I'd just like to entrust our blessed lady to Stephen, to guide him and to help him to make the right decisions and directions because he's got a long road ahead of him. Mm -hmm.